Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be walking through activity 10-4 titled Creating Static DNS Entries. This is from the MCSA Guide to Installing and Configuring Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2. On my edition of the book, this activity begins at page 465. Um, a quick background, um, we have Server 2, which is joined to the domain, but it's not a domain controller, so there's no Active Directory on here. We've added the DNS role, which we're going to go ahead and open now. And we're going to be creating forward and reverse lookup zone entries, um, as though we have configured and set up a web server for our network. Um, so we're going to add the forward lookup zone entry for that web server, and we're also going to add an alias for www, and then we'll set up a reverse lookup zone for that web server as well. Um, the book uses the IP address 10.10.1.11. I'm going to vary from that slightly. I'm going to use 10.10.1.21. Um, I think I have a Windows 8 machine running the 10.10.1.11 IP address, and I don't want to have any conflict there later. So if you're following along in the book, um, my configuration will be slightly different. So to begin, we're going to start with our forward lookup zones in the test domain one dot local, and we're going to create a new host record, and this will be web server. Um, it could be web server one. You might have a particular naming scheme for your machines. Um, it really depends on how your network is set up or how you're configuring your network to be set up. I'm going to give mine the address ten ten one twenty one. I'm going to tell it to go ahead and create this PTR record. Um, it'll give me a warning that there's no reverse lookup zone to create that PTR. So we're going to go and create that manually. And so we see our web server one there. Um, should be able to be resolved here. If we come and we do an NS lookup, on that IP address, it can't be found because there's no reverse yet. But if we do an NS lookup on the full name, which was web server one dot test one dot local, it should be resolved to an IP address. So our forward is working, um, our reverse, there's nothing set up yet, so it can't resolve our reverse lookup. So, really quick, before we get into the reverse, like I said, we're going to create an alias, which is kind of like a nickname for that machine, so that if we did have a website up and running um, and hosted on this server, people wouldn't have to know that machine name. This alias is kind of works like a nickname. And so if we use the alias um, www, and the fully qualified domain name is the full machine name, which was, in this case, web server one dot test dom one dot local so we created that alias so we can do an NS lookup on www which is how people would browse to our web page anyways um, it'll redirect automatically to that server to give them the correct web page and we can go ahead and run another NS lookup on www now and it should be resolved to an IP address and shows us the alias but we can see that the full name is actually that server alright so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up a reverse lookup zone first so we can create records inside the zone so we're going to right click and tell it to create a new zone it has a nice little wizard that we can walk through I'm going to create this as a primary um, the difference is here is the primary it stores all of the information needed for a zone and it can be directly edited so you can create new entries, you can modify entries, you can delete entries. Um, your secondary zone will create a copy from another server so you can have two places that hold the information but I think in the secondary you can't really do much to edit it. But it does give 
um, web devices another machine to query records from. Um, the stub zone I'm not terribly familiar with. Let me see what the book has for stub zones. So it's a read-only copy. Um, so it forwards queries to the primary DNS server for the zone that it holds. Um, so if I had another server that was just a stub zone, it would actually end up pointing back to this server for queries. So there's the difference between the three. Um, since this machine doesn't have an Active Directory role installed, this option is not available. Um, if you are hosting a full Active Directory domain, then this option kind of gives a little bit more fault tolerance. A little bit like a secondary zone, but Active Directory, it ties in with the Active Directory role. Um, so everything gets updated for the domain, and it works a little bit better with, with the domain. Um, but for testing purposes here, or just for demonstration purposes, we don't need to worry about that. We're going to select the primary zone and move forward. I'm going to leave this as IPv4 because that's how I'm doing all my addressing right now. Um, if you're working with very large companies or internet service providers, you may work with some IPv6 in the near future, or you may be already. Um, I'm not sure that we're going to see a whole lot of IPv6 trickle down into the small businesses or the home networks anytime in the near future, but I'm sure it's coming eventually. Um, for our network ID, I want to show you first, we're not going to use this, but if we had like a 192.168.2 network, um, we see the reverse lookup zone name is read from right to left. So it looks backwards, but it's because it's actually read from right to left. So it's the 192.168.2 zone. Um, the reason I wanted to show that is because when we use what my network scheme currently is, 1010, you can't, you can't tell that. You can't tell if it's left or right. Um, but we are going to use 1010 for our network ID. We'll let it create a new file with the network name. And I'm going to allow both non-secure and secure dynamic updates. Um, this will allow any client to update their own records. Um, as it mentions, this could be a security vulnerability. Untrusted sources could come in and modify records. But currently the only other option is to not allow dynamic updates, which means you would have to go and manually create all of your entries, which is a pain if you have a large DHCP network, because addresses will be assigned to different devices at different times, and if they aren't allowed to update their DNS records, then you have a DNS entry that's going to the wrong machine. Um, when you have an Active Directory domain, the top option here is definitely very helpful because it allows dynamic updates for anything on the domain, and anything that's not on the domain, which would probably be a few devices, maybe printers, um, Chromebooks or iPads, if you're using any of those, you can set those for static IP addresses in DHCP and then manually configure their DNS entries if you needed to. So we're going to go ahead and finish with the wizard, and we see that the zone has been created here. And so the start of authority should be a, this machine itself, 410 server 12, or server 2. And the name server, again, is the same thing with the fully qualified domain name. So next, the book mentions going in and looking at these. If you want to do that, please feel free to do so. Since we're not actually doing anything with them in this activity, I'm just going to move on. go ahead and create that pointer back to our web server now. So new PTR. Our host IP address that we set up was 1010.1.21 and the host name was web server 1. 
but since we created that alias for www, we can use that here. So that way anybody outside of our network can query through and find our web server via this reverse lookup zone entry, which is then going to go back to our forward lookup zone alias, which is then going to get to the machine. So there's several steps in the process, and it all happens very, very quickly in milliseconds, which is how we're able to load web pages at home to remote servers, because we actually query the reverse lookup zone, probably get their alias entry, and then end up getting to the correct IP address for their web server. So go ahead and hit OK, and then back in our command line, command prompt, we're going to do another lookup directly to that IP address. And we noticed that when we tried it at the beginning, we had a failure. It couldn't find anything for that record. But now that we've created our reverse lookup zone, and tied it back to a web server that we've created in our forward lookup zone. We can see that it's querying from itself, and the name that it queried was the www, so the URL, really, that we're looking for, um, and there's the IP address. And it looks like that pretty much covers everything for this activity. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below, and hopefully I'll see you all in my next video.